Okay guys, so the order you're seeing this in is not exactly the order I shot this in. I had done sort of a wrap video walking around the boat and I didn't like the way it looked and I realized there's a couple of things I hadn't remembered to put in there. And I've already done the scoring. None of what you're going to see, so the scoring you're going to see behind this, I've already shot. But none of what I'm about to talk about would change that scoring at all because it's a, it's a fit and finish ding is all it is. But I, I didn't like the way it shot, so I'm going to split screen it and just kind of walk you through the boat. So the first thing, uh, and, and so, so some of this is good and some of this is bad. I'm just going to work my way through my list I made to myself. Uh, you see in, on the center box there in the middle of the boat, uh, that box came loose from the hinges. It's a great big heavy box lid. I get it. And, and I'm real torn on having a great big box in the middle. It's the most storage you can get because there's no walls in the way. But if it's raining and you've got to get something out of that box, everything in that box is going to get wet as opposed to, for example, that little tiny box in the bass cat. Now, what I've done is you'll see on the front deck of my boat, there's a little day box. And then the step is actually a backup ice chest. I've taken to put all my soft plastics that I'm going to be using during the day in that step. So I've turned that really into my, into my day box, but I still keep my hooks and my sinkers in that big box. So if I break something off, i got to get into that big box. But you'll notice there's a little bit of different carpet color on that middle box. Well, the hinges came out of it. They screwed it back together. The hinges came out of it again. They screwed it back together again. The second time, the glass was messed up in the box lid on the, on the lip where the hinges connect. So they got me a new box lid. Luckily, warranty, great. Doesn't match. First time we opened that box lid, it folded over backwards and tore out the, uh, tore out the hinges, which you can probably see when I lift the box up here in a little lighter, lighter part of this video when I'm just showing you a walkthrough. It's fixed now. It works great. But, I mean, that seems to me a fit and finish thing. Uh, the boat is... And I've already talked about there, there was a soft spot on the front deck when I got the boat. Maybe I didn't talk about that. I believe I did. But there was a soft spot. The boat had to go back in, get repaired. The, the trim is still not right on the boat uh, around the edges. Now, it could probably be fixed, but at that time, the ranger dealer told me uh, that all their boats had that problem. The boat, so part of why I love the boat, it is a super stable fishing platform. It's super stable going down the lake. It's got nice low gunnels on the front. It's got a ton of storage. I've not been in a boat that's got more storage. You can say the Charger's got good storage. It doesn't have boxes as big as the boxes on the back of this boat. And I'm not going to say that's necessarily a positive because I have certainly carried more tackle in this boat than I needed to at points in the past. Uh, it's got a pretty good ice chest. It's forward of the passenger console, which I would rather see it in the back of the boat. But it actually holds ice decently for a boat-installed uh, ice chest. Now, I carry an Ego ice chest as a backup, or actually it's what I use as my ice chest, but it doesn't really matter. The boat's well lit. Now, I did not spend the money for the rigid lighting. The internal lights are good in the boxes, and the external lights are good as well. You can't turn them on on separate switches like you can in the Basscat, which I like, but still good lights. Uh, it's a nice size live well. It's not a huge live well like the Charger, but it's bigger than the Basscat. It does have a removal center, sorry, log truck with a jake brake. It does have a center uh, divider that can be removed, I'm told. I've never tried to do that. My luck, it wouldn't go back in. Uh, look here in the back of the boat. The sump access is not good. Uh, you've got to pull the batteries to get underneath to down to anything at all. And a lot of them, you also got to pull the battery charger as well. Which I look around back there and I'm like, well, I don't see any other space. But other manufacturers have engineered the space back there, as we've seen in both the other two boats we reviewed. So it can be done. Um, and also on the batteries, it's got those, what I didn't know there was anything different, but it's got those cheap straps on it. And as I've talked about, I love that very, very secure lockdown system that Basscat has in their boats. It does have a jumper switch. So if your battery, your main cranking battery runs down, which running as many electronics as most of us do can happen, probably will happen. You flip that switch and it jumps. Mine wasn't wired right from the factory. Guess when I found that out? Got out on the water one day in a tournament, battery wouldn't crank. If you don't know this, you can't jump off three connected batteries to one battery. So I had to disconnect the battery, uh, disconnect one of my trolling motor batteries, connect it and jump it, carried it into the dealership and said something's really wrong. And they said, oh, well, it's not wired right from the factory. Seriously, guys, how many boats does Ranger wire that they can't get the jumper box wired correctly? 
just fit and finish, stuff that frustrates me. Uh, I, I do see that the new Rangers, the 2021s, all come with lithium batteries. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. The front deck's padded, which I, I'm sure somebody did it before, but my, the first boat I knew that did it was a Ranger, and it really does make a difference on your back. There is no good prop storage in this boat. The only real place to put a prop is in one of those back fiberglass finish compartments, and it eats up a lot of space. I had a Skeeter, I know the Bass Cat, a lot of boats have prop storage under the seat or in the back, which would be nice if you could put it all the way in the back because prop's heavy. Uh, it does have this remote plug. I love this feature in this boat. It's just a way that you don't have to get in the water if you forget to put your plug in and there's a big line and you can't get back out of the water. So that should be standard on everybody and I think more manufacturers are going to make that uh, at least uh, something you can get. Good access to the charger plug right there on the back of the boat. I've already talked about the battery straps. I do like in both the other boats reviewed that uh, driver's cleat where you can tie the boat off. Looking at the Ranger website, I don't see that in the 2021 models. I don't see a charger, uh, a strap over there. Uh, there's nothing new or revolutionary about this boat, 521C. I'll be in an L later this week. We'll see. Uh, now you see on my driver's wall, there's a USB plug. In my boat, that was a cigarette lighter. I had the, had the dealership do a conversion for me, but my understanding is now that Ranger has put USB plugs, as many manufacturers have now, in a box, which is good. It's got a good jack on it. If you ever break it, it's hard to get out, but it's nice and clean. It's tucked in up onto the trailer. It's got a great winch. Again, I'd never thought about that until I couldn't get that charger cranked up on the trailer with the winch. This boat's got a winch that will flat move a big boat up on a trailer if you need to. It's got oil bath hubs. It's got a torsion axle. Uh, it's a, again, it's a very fishable boat with one caveat. It's a 98 inch beam and it's super stable. So if you're in the timber, it's, it's wide, right? Now, I don't, back when I fished Palestine and rich on chambers a lot, especially when chambers was new, a narrow boat was better and a shorter boat was better. This boat is hard to maneuver in the timber and it's hard to roll off of a, roll off of a, a stump because it's hard to tip this boat. Luckily, it's got a 101 thrust. That was just a redneck pickup truck. Luckily, it's got a 101 thrust Minkota Ultrax on the front, so I can get off most stumps. But it is, in timber, this is not as fishable a boat as it is open water. I just fish mostly open water. Uh, you know, I learned a lesson if you go back, and it's one of my all-time favorite videos. Actually, I'll stick a link to it right there. I fished a tournament with my buddy Chet over on Toledo Bend a few years ago, and we went in his metal boat. Which, by the way, I've had a lot of requests about that. When we're done with the glass boats, I'm real interested to do a metal boat review. So stick with me. That may be early next year, but we'll get to that. But I was stunned at how shallow a draft that boat had and what he could get in and out of that I never could have gotten in and out of in my big boat. So there's definite advantages to small boats, metal boats, low drafting boats. That's not what this is. This is a big water boat, Rayburn, Toledo Bend, Great Lakes, uh, Texoma, Grand Lake, good gosh, Eufaula in, in Oklahoma, these great big lakes that some of us fish, it's an ideal boat. So that's the last little bit of my walkthrough. Uh, let's go grade this boat. As you can tell, I am perspiring. So let's go grade it and we'll show you what we did on the Ranger. Time to grade the big Ranger. And I, I gotta tell you, I spent a tremendous amount of time thinking about and scoring this boat. And it's gonna be the same as the other ones. Uh, 0 to 9 per category, 5 categories, 0 to 20, and then a 6th category for tournament fishermen for contingency. So 0 to 9 is less than average score, 10 or 12 is average, 10 to 12, 13 to 16 is good, 17 to 18 is excellent, and 19 or 20 you blew my socks off. No boat, first two boats have scored anything better than an excellent on any category. And then over, overall scoring 0 to 45, less than average, 46 to 60 average, 61 to 80 good. For me to consider a boat in the top of the average or the bottom of the good, even pretty far up into the good, it would have to be a value boat to me. It had to be a boat that was just less expensive than the boats we've looked at so far, being the Charger, the Bass Cat, and the Ranger boat. And then 81 to 90 would be uh, excellent and 91 and above, I'm being stingy with my points. And I'm doing that for several reasons. Number one, I don't think anybody does everything great. 
Uh, so it's going to be really hard to get to that score. Uh, and also just to give some room. And, and fairness to Bass Cat, um, Rick Pierce commented on the Texas Fishing Forum that I would get better as this as I've gone through, and I feel like I am. I'm learning more things. I didn't know the first thing, the difference between a torsion axle and a leaf spring axle versus a shock trailer under a boat now, and I know the difference now. There's, there's good and bad with all of them. Most people would prefer the torsion because it's quieter and it's, it's not as rough. It doesn't last quite as long. It's a little rougher in the cold weather, blah, 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 lots of things. So I'm learning. But, again, in fairness to them, that boat scored really well. And it's going to be hard for a boat to score better than what that bass cat, that first bass cat scored. So let's, uh, let's jump into the scoring here. So let's start out with fishability. So the positives on this boat are the gunnels are low. It's got the widest front deck, as you saw in the measurements of any boat we've looked at so far. It's a very stable fishing platform, and it's got a traditional box layout. Now, I don't score traditional box layout good or bad, right? Some guys like having, for example, the bass cat with that little day box right at the front. I get that. But it's a traditional box layout, so I put it under positives, but I really didn't score a point for it one way or the other. Negatives are... Uh, the boat, the access, where you mount your graphs, it's really hard to get to your trim button. And what I mean by that is I want to be able to use my foot to trim up and down. And another thing I'll say about this boat, and maybe it's just the way I have it set up, but I did notice the charger and the bass cap were much easier to step in the front of the boat than it is my boat. My graphs seem to be more in the way. I don't know why that is. It may be where that trolling motor's position where you can set those graphs up, but I did notice that as I've been in these boats, you know, you're kind of seeing stuff, oh, I like that and I don't like that. So that's one thing. Again, I didn't score positive or negative, it's just something I noticed. Uh, and then you'll, uh, so, it, and I think I said this, but just to make sure I did, I do not like where the trim access is and the other buttons are hard to get to and there's no way you can trim on my boat your motor up or down with your foot. Now maybe they put it over there so you don't, so you don't break the switches, but I like both the Bass Cat and the Charger put it over under the trolling motor and it's much more accessible and they put buttons in there you could do with your foot even if you have tennis shoes on. Probably not hunting boots but tennis shoes on. Now, you'll see down there I put a little note to myself just to remind me of this. So, I'm scoring boats for me, right? We don't fish in timber much. When Toledo gets low, you'll fish around some timber some. But this is not like what I fished around when I fished Roach on Chambers and Palestine in your past. So I will say to you, my boat, my Z521C with a 98 inch beam and not being very tippy is not a great fishing in the timber boat. It's hard to get off, it's harder to get off of stumps because it's really hard to rock because it's so dang stable and it's wide, right? If you're in the woods, you'd rather be in a canoe than in a 98 inch beam bass boat. So I just noted that there, as you're going through this process for yourself, if you fish a lake that's very, very stumpy, this may not be the boat for you, because this boat is not easy to fish in standing timber. Okay, next up is fit and, uh, fit and finish. Now, some guys are going to pitch a fit and say I'm being hypercritical hyper here, but let me give you my background on this, okay? So the first bass boat I bought in Texas, I bought from Skip Wisdom, who had taken a bass boat in trade for some body work, from a striper guy who had striper guide who had worn a Hydra Sport out. Literally going down the lake, pieces of carp would fly off and come up and hit you in the head. I, I, I popped the hull and the cap separated from each other one night, uh, at one day. My rod box lid flew off one day. And I tell you all that to tell you this. In the bass club I grew up fishing, you wanted to work your way up to own a ranger boat. It was the pinnacle. That's what you wanted. You, you, if you could ever afford it, you wanted to be in a ranger boat. And I won some boats. I won some money. And every time I won a boat or I won some money, I would take that boat and sell it. And I would move up in scale of boats until I finally got in a ranger bass boat. Now, I've had a very successful career but I have not always been able to afford a Ranger Bass Boat. This is my fourth one, so I will admit, I probably have really high expectations out of this boat, not just because it's what I always wanted to be in, but it, because I've had three before it. 
and I have seen the quality boat Ranger has built in the past. So I'm going to judge it how to say this. When LeBron James steps, up, steps on a basketball court or when Tiger Woods steps on a golf course, they are judged at a different standard, specifically to fit and finish in this case. I am judging this boat maybe to a different standard and maybe not. You can be the judge of that. So the positives on this boat is it's got good carpet in it. It's got really pretty glass. They make a beautiful boat. It's got padded front decks. It's a very solid feeling boat. Now, having said that, to me, now, by the way, so I came, my last boat that was not a Ranger was a Skeeter ZX250, which is not Skeeter's premier boat. Uh, and back then it wasn't either. And I told a buddy of mine, I said, you know, I feel like I got out of a Lincoln Town car and into a Mercedes when I got in that Ranger. It was just tighter. It was quieter. It didn't slap the water. It was solid. When you come off a big wave and hit the water, bam, it didn't shudder. It was just solid. My 2018 boat is different than my prior boats. There's, I don't know how else to say that. I have heard, and I have nothing to back this up, that there's less foam in the hull of my boat. I'll tell you all, when Lucas rigged my boat, Lucas is a ranger guy. So he ran all my wires for my electronics. He said there's less foam in your boat than there is in the older Ranger boats. Guys, I cannot say that's true or not. All I can tell you is what I feel. And what I feel is a boat that is not, does not have the same tightness and feel that my prior boats did, but still good. I don't know how else to say that. Um, so it's good. I put it in positives, but it is not what it once was to me. You can argue that. I've not been in an L boat. I'll be in an L boat this weekend. I'm real curious to see if it feels like my boat. Maybe this being a package boat, that the L boat is a better boat. I don't know. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll judge that once I have experience with it. And by the way, I've had several guys reach out to me and say, which boat are you going to get? Guys, I have no idea, right? I've only been really in four boats now in the last year. I've been in my boat, a Charger, a Bass Cat, uh, five boats, uh, Kevin Skeeter, and in uh, Moon Pies Triton. So that's really all the experience I have. That's why I'm going through this process. I love, as I pointed out in the video, uh, under positives, the cockpit flooring, that traction flooring. As I look at the Ranger website, it does not appear to be an option on the sea boats anymore. It's a 300, I think an $11 option in the L boats. If I were to buy another Ranger and it's a sea boat, I would really try to beg them, if it's not an option, into putting it in my floor for me or letting me do it aftermarket. Uh, the boat does have good interior lighting. Now, I did not uh, pay the extra money for the rigid interior lighting, so it's just the way I bought it. Negatives on this boat. And again, being pretty critical here. My seats are not good. Um, I don't know how else to say that. When I sit in them, in the back of my seat, I can feel something other than cushion. And if you get in rough water, you will bottom out in my seats. They just are not comfortable. Um, and mine's an 18, right? So I'm on a dinging on this. If you're looking at buying a Ranger boat, go sit in one. I tried to. There's not a 521 or 520C in a 2021 model anywhere around here. I called all the dealers I could find within 30 miles of my house. I'm not going to drive 200 miles to sit in the boat seat. So that's what you can do, but just beware. I do not find mine comfortable. Maybe they're better in the newer boats. When I got my boat, the first day I got in my boat, I stepped up on the front deck and it went pop, pop. And I'm like, what in the world? I stepped over the side and stepped stop and it went pop, pop. There was a recess or a hole in the glass on my front deck. I had to carry it back to the dealership, which was a long way back then, over three hours each way. I leave it with them a month later when they got the parts in, and they had to put new glass on my front deck. I don't know how much weight they added to it, but that's something the dealer, the, the, not the dealer, the, it should never have left the factory without somebody at least stepping around on the front deck to know there's a problem up there. And to cap it off, you saw that trim on the edge of my boat. When they put the new carpet down on my front deck, 
they put new rubber trim around the edge. It didn't even get back to the Zavala before it came loose. And when I called him and said, hey, it came loose, which would have been a six-hour round trip to get it fixed, he said, you really don't want to mess with it because uh, it won't stay down. We're having that problem with all the Rangers that we have. And by the way, my Ranger boat dealer that I bought my Ranger from is not a Ranger boat dealer anymore. I don't know why. I didn't ask. It's not my business, but they're not. So fit and finish. Come on, guys. It's rubber trim. Get it where it fits. It's kind of like back in the day, and again, I don't know about Skeeter, but I used to have fits with my rub rail on my Skeeter. I couldn't keep a rub rail on there. Something so basic. Um, those touch pads, although they're cool, I've had two of them fail now. Luckily, my boat's under warranty, right? Um, but uh, if you lose one and they're not under warranty, they're two or $300 a piece. So that bothers me. And then the last thing, as I pointed out in, in the boat, my box lid, I'm now on my third set of hinges, second box lid on my big center front box. It came loose. They, they tightened it back up. It came loose again. They put a new, uh, they put a new uh, box lid on it, which, of course, then the carpet doesn't match. The first time I opened it, it folded and fell over backwards and ripped all the hinges out of it. It had to be put back together again. These are things, I haven't priced it, but I suspect if you price that boat as I've got it sitting right here in front of me now, it's an $80,000 boat. These are things that should not be a problem on that expensive of a boat. So yeah, I'm, I'm beating it up. I'm giving it average. And I had to talk myself back into average because everything on the left is good. And a lot of guys probably haven't had near the problems I've had with this particular boat. And, I, and it's not a lot. It's what? One, two, three, four, five things. It's still five things, right? So I'm scoring it a 12. That's what I'm going to do for fit and finish. Hey, guys. <laughs> so a little cutaway. I realized as I sat down editing this video that um, I missed something on fit and finish. And, and maybe this suggests I'm being hypercritical. But as I told you, one of the things I'm doing is I'm talking to fiberglass shops kind of in four states, so Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Louisiana. And I've now talked to six fiberglass shops, and my questions to, I have two questions to them. List in order one, two, three of the boats. I mean, obviously you guys work on boats every day, you cut them open. What's the best built boat? One, two, three. And then second question is uh, what boats are you seeing the most non-impact problems or damage with, delaminating hulls, stress cracks, etc. And I told you this in Basscat. Basscat, at that point, I had talked to four of these dealerships, excuse me, four of these fiberglass shops, and Cat was one of very few boats, actually one of two, that got listed in the top three best built boat and was ranked number one by one of, at least one of those fiberglass shops. Ranger's the other one. So I've now talked to six fiberglass shops, all six of them still listed Basscat, and actually one of them didn't, didn't list Basscat, and I said, what about get Basscat? He goes, oh, actually I probably would have listed them as one of the best built boats, we just don't see them very much. And he's in an area, he's actually in Missouri, they don't see a lot of damage of hitting stuff, uh, so like we do down here in Texas and Louisiana. Um, but Ranger, across the board, uh, got scored as one of the best built boats. Only one of them ranked them as the best built boat, and I thought it was really interesting. It was actually a shop in Arkansas. And the guy said, by the way, and it's kind of at the end of the conversation, we talked for a long time. He said, by the way, I probably should mention, uh, we really mostly work on older boats, kind of 05, 06, 08. Every once in a while we'll see a 2011 boat. He goes, most of my business is older boats. Um, and he's the one who actually listed Ranger best built, which doesn't surprise me, right? Uh, but anyway, I just thought that was interesting, and I wanted to make sure and add that back in here, that uh, those are the two boats that are getting mentioned the most. I still hadn't figured out exactly how I'm going to phrase this, because uh, I don't want to get sued for slander on the boats that, that got beat up by some of the fiberglass shops, but I'm going to tell you about them when we, view those, when we, when we review those boats, because there's a couple of them. So there you go, guys. Back to the video. What I love about this boat is the performance. It's a very dry ride. It's an excellent big water boat. I would put this boat up against any boat I've been in so far in big water. I like that big charger. 
but I know how to drive my boat. I'm comfortable in it, and I have not been in seas yet that I was uncomfortable or felt unsafe or didn't feel like I could get where I needed to go. Boat's got great nose control for trailing seas, and the way I have it propped, 23 pitch, three blade fury, it's got a spectacular hole shot. The best hole shot of any of the boats we've looked at so far. The negatives are it's ranger fast, right? It's just got ranger speed. My boat as it sits is tournament loaded 67 to 69 and a half miles an hour. And tournament loaded, I mean 50 gallons of fuel, live wells full, and two full grown men in it. Yeah, I can strip it down and make it run 73 miles an hour, take a bunch of tackle out of it, live wells empty, and a quarter of a tank of gas. But that's not how I run around. Now, I could I could flip the prop on this boat and go to a 24 pitch four blade and pick up speed, but I lose my whole shot and I also lose some control in rough waters. Look, when you're in rough waters, the last thing you want is something that bogs down when you get on it. I fish Rayburn and Toledo. I'm a big water guy. I need to get up on the pad and need to be able to not have that boat uh, bog down when I need to jump over a wave or slow down before I go into a wave. So I score the boat 17 for performance, excellent. As I've said, I don't see anybody scoring 18, 19, or 20. If you could put that boat in my hands and make it run 74 miles an hour, tournament loaded, it would score a 19 or a 20. But there's give and trade, right? Amenities. Uh, the USB boxes, and by the way, thanks for all the notes about this, guys. I think most manufacturers have figured this out on the newer boats. The 521C boat does have a USB port in the box where you can charge your phone out of the weather. Thank you. Locker bar, I believe it came standard on my boat here. I didn't score that a yes or a no, positive or a negative. I do like that the, that the, that the dash will hold a 12-inch uh, graph flush mounted. My seats adjust forward and back. I think that should be standard in everybody's boat. It's the most storage I've seen in a boat. Uh, and now some guys have jumped on me about that charger. Clint had so much crap in the front of that charger. It may have been a lot bigger than what I judged it at. It wouldn't have score, changed my overall score on the boat. And you'll see here, actually, as much storage as are in this boat could be a negative. I used to carry this boat totally loaded. I've really stripped a lot of stuff back out of the boat now. The remote drain plug is standard in this boat. I understand it's optional in some other boats. Let me just tell you right now. If it's less than $300, which is about $2 on your banknote, get the remote plug on whatever boat you get. I like the ventilated storage boxes where you can turn it on and it circulates air. It's got a fan that circulates air through your boxes to dry your stuff out. I think that's cool. And the padded decks I've already mentioned. The only negative really on amenities is there's really no sump access. To get to anything in the back of the boat, uh, you gotta, uh, you got to dig around in there, pull your batteries. And by the way, I didn't note it here. Actually, I'll, I'll note it by the time you guys see this, but, uh, or I'll probably forget. But it's got the little cheapy battery straps, unlike those cool battery uh, compartments <coughs> that, that lock down the batteries in, uh, in the, uh, sorry, in the basket. That was cool, and that sort of changed my mind about what should be kind of standard back there. So... Kudos for Bass Cap for making that a really neat setup, and Ranger just has the straps that if you've ever taken one apart, it is so frustrating because I could never remember how to put it back together. So on the amenities, I score it 14, just a good, which is about what most of these boats are scoring right now. Hey guys, just a quick voiceover. Uh, I realize as I'm going through the process here, uh, I did not mention in the scoring, it does have a decent ice chest, which I talked about in the video. But then uh, two issues on the negative. Uh, as I mentioned, it's hard to read your graph. Uh, obviously, you can mount them higher, but the in dash graph is just hard to read uh, without leaning forward over your uh, steering wheel. And then also, uh, there is just not good prop storage in the boat either. So I thought I'd point those two things out. I mean, you can store it in one of your back boxes, but of course, you give up space. There's not a designated spot for prop storage. Uh, and then on trailers and other stuff, uh, I score it really well. I score it excellent. It does have a trailer step. It's a $500 option. It's got good backup lights. It's got a swing away tub, oil bath lubes. It's a pretty trailer. Uh, it's got a really good winch on the front. I didn't realize how important that was until I did the charger review and I couldn't even crank the boat up on the trailer with the winch. 
It's got a parking brake. If you guys have never seen this, there's a lever on the front of my trailer that I can put it in a parking lot, set that lever, unhook it, and I don't have to chalk my boat. It's not going anywhere. That's cool. should be on every boat. Torsion axles. Again, I've done quite a bit of research on this recently. I understand now why Bass Cat has torsion axles. It's a smoother ride, and it's a quieter ride. You don't get all that popping and creaking you get from leaf springs. And another thing, as we've talked about, I got really good dealer access, right? I've got a dealer right here. Premier is right here in Lufkin down the street from me, uh, 19, 20 miles away. Negatives, the only real negative is there's nothing really new or revolutionary about this boat. It's pretty much the same boat they've been making now from a design standpoint, from what I can see, for a number of years now. Somewhere up there, I didn't mention the boat, uh, and I think I mentioned it, I may have missed it. Bear with me for just a second. You know, I guess it would fall in here under trailers and other stuff. It does have a good, eye, a live, uh, a live well. it has a good ice chest in it. It's a, it's a pretty big live well, but it's not nearly as big as a charger. It's bigger than the Bass Cat. But the ice chest is in front of the, dry, or the passenger console. So it's forward, which I don't love. As you know, boats go but run better with the weight in the back. And you generally, with ice and water, put a lot of weight in your ice chest. But it does hold ice pretty well for a built-in ice chest. You guys see I carry an Ego little zip-up ice chest quite a bit, especially when I'm by myself, to move the weight back, and it's just easier to transfer ice in and out of the house. And it does keep it cold longer. Uh, but it's not bad in the Ranger boat. It's not a bad ice chest in the boat. So I score the Ranger 521C 77, which is a score of good. The Bass Cat outscores it. And I'm going to say this. I don't know how else to say this. This is me personally. I would still buy this boat over the Bass Cat only because what this boat scored poorly on is fit and finish, but I love the ride. I love the fishability of the boat more than I do the Bass Cat. And now, having said that, if I get in a Bass Cat and it has the same fit and finish and it'll run up in the 70s, this is, a bit, you know, that Bass Cat judgment was on one Bass Cat. Uh, but the hybrid versus my 521C versus the Charger, this is still my choice. Even though the Bass Cat outscored it a little bit. I would not have a problem owning any one of these three boats as we've talked about, but I'm looking for the boat I'm going to buy next. Uh, and I, So I've still got some work to do if it's going to be something other than a Ranger. And it may or may not be, but fit and finish bothers me a lot. Contingency program, I'm going to score it 17 excellent, but that's for me, and this was very specific. So I have always fished FLW stuff. I fished, uh, I fished the BFLs, and I fished Coastas for several years until they increased the entry fee three years in a row, or three or four years, whatever it was, with no corresponding increase in the payout, and I quit fishing them. Now, they've dropped the entry fee a little bit. The payout's still about the same, but... For FLW Tour and the Series, which is what we fished, what used to be called the Costa, you're in a Ranger boat, a qualified Ranger boat, two years, 2016 or newer, and that's a uh, $25,000 prize. Now, by the way, across the board, I will score them better than Bass Cat because Bass Cat was two years or newer and less than two years since the date of purchase, which I don't like that caveat, right? I wouldn't want to buy, I mean, look, you can buy a 2021 boat right now, and before 2023 is out, you wouldn't qualify for Bass Cat Quest. I think they should change that. That's just my opinion. Um, but for me, this is a good program. If you're, and by the way, BFL's $5,000, it's better in a Bass Cat. It's $7,500, so that weighs towards them. The Opens... Only $5,000 in a Ranger. That really surprised me. Obviously, they like, they're supporting FLW a lot more than they're supporting BASS. Even an Elite Series event, those pros only win $10,000. Now, well, anyway. Texas Team Trail, very nice on Ranger. Uh, there's a boat upgrade if you want it, and they pay all the way down to 50th place. I have cashed so many little checks. I mean, $100, $250 makes a difference, right? It offsets part of your entry fee on those Texas team trails. I've gotten a lot of checks from Ranger Cup when we didn't even get a check. Zero dollars in Bass Champs, zero dollars in Outball Outdoors from what I could see. 
I did notice for you Oklahoma guys, 2000 bucks. There's way less team circuits. If you remember it, I scored Bascat really well because they had so many team circuits in there. There's way less team circuits that Ranger pays than Bascat pays. Um, and other than the BFLs, the money's better in the FLW tournaments in the Ranger than the Bascat. About the same in BASS. So this is one of those where this is for me. I scored a 17. You might fish something that's not on the list. If you just fish team tournaments, you're going to come out better most likely in a bass cat. So that's my scoring. A score of good, a score of 17 on contingency. Um, yeah, I may have been a little bit of harsh on the Ranger boat, but I got high expectations because I paid a premium price for this boat. And I've had three prior to it that I love. There's a reason I bought three and now four. Um, but they got to up their game on the fit and finish. And I, I, I'm, I'm fearful that's not happening. A um, lot of turnover in flipping Arkansas right now. And, you know, maybe they get the ship right and it's all better. And we all, or I love Ranger boats again in the future. We shall see. But we're also going to see what else is out there. So. The next couple of boats we're going to review, we're going to review a Phoenix. I hope this weekend uh, we're going to review a couple of Phoenixes in the near future, just the next few boats that we're going to be looking at. A Camus, a Ranger Z520L. Uh, I think that's the next several boats we're going to look at. We're going to try to get to all of them. I'll try to get Moon Pies Triton down here in the next couple of weeks and give it a spin. I've been, spent a lot of time in it, but I've not held the steering wheel in it a lot. So stick around. A lot more reviews coming. Thanks so much for all your feedback, uh, good and bad. Look, I, 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 I'm not car and driver, right? I don't have a staff doing the research for me on this stuff. All I can do is judge the boats that I get a chance to look at. I don't have an extra 20 hours to go through every option in every boat. I did happen to know a lot of the options in the Rangers, and I'll try to do a better job in the future, guys. I'm doing the best I can. So I appreciate y'all's patience as we work through this deal. Just because I grade a boat a certain way doesn't mean it's a great boat or a bad boat or it's a boat I'm going to get or not going to get. We shall see. It's all a process. So I hope you're enjoying the process with me. Stay tuned. Thanks for referring your buddies to my channel. And if you would, please support my sponsors. Remember, Six Cents Fishing at their website. If you use the code KEN10, you get 10% off. And also, Waterland Optics, same thing. KEN10, you get 10% off any of their new sunglasses, which I love, by the way. I've really enjoyed wearing those. And, uh, of course, Tackle Warehouse, I've got links below. If you click on one of my links and make purchases on that trip to Tackle Warehouse, Tackle Warehouse supports my channel and lets me continue doing goofy stuff like this. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you all in just a couple of days.